Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create an SPSS data set, to run an independent t-test on SPSS, and to create a bar graph on SPSS. So let's get started. I've opened SPSS to a new um, data set, so you'll need to download SPSS to your computer and then open up a new data set, and it looks something like this. There are two views a data view and a variable view. When you are starting, you're going to need to add your data by first typing in the um, variables that you plan to add to your data set. Now, in my experiment, I asked the question, and this is from project one, do faculty and staff drive bigger vehicles than students? I kind of think they do. My alternate hypothesis is that they do because uh, they probably have bigger families, they maybe are more expensive vehicles, etc. And um, my null hypothesis would be then there is no difference in vehicle size. And so I went out and I measured the size of vehicles in meters in um, faculty lots and in student lots. And I measured, I made uh, 30 measurements of faculty cars and 30 of student cars. And now I have two variables that I need to include. The first variable is uh, the independent variable, the owner of the car. We have got two categories, faculty and staff and students. So I'm going to use the name owner, um, maybe I'll call it car owner. Oh yeah, you have to um, car owner, okay? And as soon as I click enter, I get all of these columns filled in. Some of these columns aren't super important. We want to use numbers whenever we can. And so for car owners, we have two types of car owners, faculty and staff, and students. We're going to use the values 1 and 2 to represent those two things. And so I'm going to type that in. So I have a value of 1 that represents faculty oops, and staff, car owners. And I'm going to type in 2 for student car owners. I'm going to add that and hit OK. And also, let's see, one other thing to pay attention to is the measure. We are using a nominal measure here. We've got two categories. They're not in order. There's not, um, they're not continuous variables like a scale measure would be. This is just nominal. Our second variable is the actual measure of car length. And um, we're going to measure that in meters, but I want to, um, this is the dependent variable. So I'm going to call that the mean car length. And I probably should put in meters, but I'm not going to because it's hard to fit that all into my little title here. And um, that's just going to be a simple number for every single um, uh, value that we take. And it's a scale measurement because this is a continuous variable. We can get any length car. Now, when I go to my data view, click on data view on the bottom, you can see I have two columns, the car owner and the mean car length. And I've got a set of data that I've already collected and I'm copying and pasting it into my um, spreadsheet. You might have to type these in. My um, spreadsheet has car owners, ones, our uh, faculty and staff, twos are students, and then I have the car length for each of 30 different measurements. So I'm good. I've got all my data. I've just created a data set. Now what do I do with the data set? Well, in I intended to compare the mean car lengths of faculties and students. And we can do this with descriptive statistics to just determine the mean and the variation around the mean, like the standard error. I also can do inferential statistical tests. We're going to use an independent t-test to compare the means of two groups to give me a better understanding and, and to be more confident about the conclusions that I make. Are these two groups different from each other or not? My null hypothesis is that there's no difference between the two groups. My alternative hypothesis is that faculty cars are bigger than student cars. To test whether these two groups are statistically different from each other, we're going to use an independent t-test. To do that, you can see a menu up on the top. Uh, that one of the buttons is Analyze. 
go to analyze, and there are all different kinds of statistical analyses here. We're going to compare the means of two groups. And we're going to do an independent samples t-test because our two groups are independent of each other. We've got faculty and we've got students, independent groups. We're not comparing the same people taking a test before they study and a test after they study. That would be a paired t-test. We've just got an independent samples t-test. So I'm going to click on that. And in my independent samples t-test, the variable that I, the test variable is the length of the car that I measured. The grouping variable is the two categories, the car owner, right? We either have um, faculty or students. And I need to define the groups before I can run this. My groups are given the values one and two because that's what I used in my uh, data set. So I'm going to hit continue and I should be okay. What I like about the t-test is it also uh, it, it puts out the results of the t-test on in an output file. So if I click OK, we're going to see some results. But I also like that it puts out um, information on uh, descriptive statistics. So this first little uh, chart says, um, let's just pull that down here says group statistics. These are descriptive statistics. This tells us our sample size. So for faculty and staff, we measured 30 cars. For students, we measured 30 cars. The means, mean car lengths in meters, are recorded here, 5.23 and 4.49 or 4.5. I could round that too. And then some measures of variation around the mean. That tells us how much variability there is. And I'm going to use the standard error of the mean when I report data. These are usually smaller than the standard deviation. Okay, down here in the second um, chart are the results of the independent samples t-test. We're going to assume equal variances, so we're only going to look at the top row. And there's a bunch of things that aren't important. Three columns are really important. The t, the degrees of freedom, and the, and the significance or p-value. The t-value is the statistic itself, 3.765. That doesn't help us much, um, the, unless you're a statistician. The degrees of freedom tells us how big the sample size is. Okay, in this case, it's um, 30 minus 1 plus 30 minus 1, or, or 58. That tells us how many, how, how many cars we measured. And then the p-value, or the sig two-tailed significance value, is the probability value. This one is very small. Probabilities range from 0 to 1. And we would typically write this 0, 0, 0 as a p of less than 0. 0.001. That's small. What does that mean? The p-value tells you the probability that the that um, <laughs> the probability that the differences between the two groups are just due to chance. So there is a very small probability that the differences we see between our two groups is just due to chance like a null hypothesis suggests, right? There, there is a very, very, very small probability that the differences we see are just due to chance. So if these differences, what that means is these differences are between our two groups in car size are probably not just due to chance. There are probably real differences between faculty and staff car lengths and student car lengths. That's a good p-value. I'm happy with that. When the p-value is less than 0.05, we can say that the means of these two groups are statistically significant. They're different from each other. In this case, faculty and staff seem to have longer cars than students. We would say that the data support our alternative hypothesis that faculty and staff have longer cars than students. If the p-value is bigger than 0.05, then we um, don't reject our null hypothesis. Then we say, oh, the differences here are probably just due to chance. Okay? So our p-value of 0.05 is the cutoff. Less than 0.05, we say, ooh, something interesting is happening. The differences we see are significant. Or greater than 0.05, mm, the differences we see are just due to chance. So we don't reject our null hypothesis if the p-value is big. 
All right, so this is interesting. Now I want to graph the data, and I want to make a simple bar graph here. So I'm going to go to Graphs at the top, Chart Builder, and I'm going to hit OK for this. And what we get is kind of a complicated picture, but it's not too hard. What I want to do is create a simple bar graph. So I'm going to go to the bottom menu, click on the bar graph here, and drag it to the top white box. And now I have a bar graph, but now I need to put in data. Uh, the car owner, the independent variable, faculty and staff or students, that's going to go always on the x-axis. The dependent variable, the length of the car, mean length of the car, is going to go on the y-axis. And now I've got kind of everything I need. I, wanna ch I want to display error bars because I want to show how much variation there is. And I'm going to use my standard error bars. So I've got my standard error bars. Let's see. I probably want to delete the title because I don't need a title. We're going to have to make a results summary in a figure caption. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to write none. And then I kind of want to change this. This is yucky. Um, this x-axis. I really want to change. No, not the x-axis. That just says car owner. That's fine. Actually, I'm going to do that. Please put an in input. For the y-axis, yeah. For the x-axis, I'm going to try to write mean car length in meters. I hope that that works. Okay. And I could change the, the values here. I could change this to 2 if I wanted to because I want to shrink the scale so it looks a little bit um, so it looks a little bit more distinct. Now I think I'm okay. I think I've got my graph the way I want it to be. I'm going to hit okay and it's going to my graph's going to appear in the output um, file. It should appear. Here it is. Okay. So I think it did everything I wanted it to do. Um, I've got a nice bar graph that compares the faculty and staff and student car lengths, mean car length in meters on the y-axis. It starts at, my, my y-axis starts at 2 because I thought otherwise there's too much. Um, the the x-axis, the y-axis becomes too long. Now, if I want to take this, I can copy it and paste it somewhere else if I need to put it into an assignment. And that's it. Thanks so much. I think we're done here. I'm just going to X out of it. But if I were you, I would save your output file and save your data file every time you work with SPSS, OK? Um, so it asks you. <laughs> I'm going to click No at this point. But you'll want to save it, OK? That's it. Thanks.